today. Wouldn't it be nice if we could find trig functions for any angle, no matter where it is? And what do I mean by where it is? Notice the quadrant, the xy plane. Luciano, Luciano, go to my computer. Turn it down. And just go to the mouse, move it to the left oh, screen. So it help that. No, move the mouse to the left screen. Okay, okay. Just click on the screen. Uh, It'll. I'm skipping the ad. No, I don't even know what it was. It was yeah, skip the ad and then, pa then just it pause it. Okay. Thanks. So when you're in the XY plane, guys, Angles can be in, I'm going to give the numbers again. We've done this before. Quadrant one. Go quadrant two. Quadrant three. And quadrant four. They go like the, like, they're counterclockwise of a clock. Yeah. So angles can be anywhere, guys. The angles we've been dealing with mostly have been in this quadrant. The reason is theta is always between 0 and 90. 0 degrees to 90 degrees. So we're always talking about the, one of these angles that are there. But nothing is stopping the angle. We've done the, we've done the angle like 200 degree angle before, haven't we? 200 degree angle went down here. Remember? 200. Well, how am I going to apply trig to that angle? I'm glad you asked, because I'm going to show you today. So what is here? In the previous lesson, you found trigonometric functions for positive acute angles. Of course, they were all acute. It can't have an obtuse angle, or else it would not be a right, right triangle. Think about it. So every angle that we were dealing with were acute. They were very, very pretty. Now we'll find trigonometric functions for any angle. Let theta be the angle in standard form. And he's giving it, calling it point P. It goes through a point X comma Y. So in other words, back to my picture over here. If I would have stopped the angle there, that point could have been, could have been negative 3, negative 2. You see what I'm saying? You got your X, you got your Y. That's my point P. So I can stop that angle anywhere I want. Alice, do I got to move you? Because you're distracting me. Maybe nobody else is distracted, but I have a feeling somebody else is. Uh, what does he say here? If the distance from point P to the origin R can be described using the formula. Huh. I wonder what formula... Let me, put a, let me put a naked xy plane here. And if I put an angle up here going through point P with a value of x comma y, how in the world could you calculate the distance between that point and the origin? I wonder if we had a formula. Anybody. Okay, let me go on a little further here. What if I drop a perpendicular down here? I drop the perpendicular. Now I have a right triangle. Oh my God, is it Pythagorean now, say it again. Pythagorean? It certainly is Pythagorean oh theorem. God, I'm so, so, do you know Pythagorean theorem is just another word for distance formula? Because if this is called the x value, and by the way, it's negative x because it went to the left, and this is the y value, which is why this ordered pair, I should have said negative x comma y, and this is my hypotenuse, or you could call it the radius of the circle that moved up there. So a lot of times we call it radius of a circle when that, an when that angle goes around. So let's talk about Pythagorean theorem right now. This negative x can be squared, whatever number it is. This y can be squared, whatever the number is, would have to be my hypotenuse or my r, whatever you want to call it, radius squared. 
You understand that formula? So you could easily calculate what we'd have to do one more step. I'd have to get rid of the squaring on the R or the H by square rooting both sides. So R is actually equal to, and by the way, guys, what's a negative X times a negative X? Does a negative goes away? Yeah. It goes away, right? Negative times negative positive. Yeah. So here's your formula. X squared plus Y squared goes inside. So I believe... That's the formula if we're looking for the, I'm going to let theta be standard for the point material of the distance. Uh, he, he did call it R. He did call it R. So we just said R is equal to what? The square root of x squared plus y squared. And I just proved it to you with Pythagorean theorem, Okay. Also, guys, who remember your, your middle school geometry, if I had two ordered pairs, 0, 0, and this point was my x comma y, x can be negative, distance formula is, I'm, I'm picking your brain here, you guys should pay attention, this is old, distance formula always was one of the x's, because that's an x and that's an x, one of the x minus the other x squared, that other x was 0, plus one of the y's minus the other y, which is a 0, squared. Does that look familiar? Distance equals square root of, what's x minus 0? No. x. What's y minus 0? Y. y squared. Same thing. Using your distance formula, which really is an offshoot of the Pythagorean theorem. You should be like mind-blowing. You'd be like, wow, this is the best thing next to sliced bread. I wish somebody would have taught me this before. Wait, okay. the of the oh, okay. I didn't, that was just my scratch work. I didn't know you really liked it. Would you like me to autograph your paper? No, thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, well. Someday, you'll miss me when I'm gone. Okay. <laughs> I've been singing that home all the time. So what we can talk about, back to this triangle here, going to x comma y and rotating it, making this an R of this circle. It's really going to be a, a radius of that circle. And I'm, but I'm looking at this triangle right here. Sine of this would actually be opposite over the adjacent, right? So think very hard. This is labeled my x. This is labeled my y. This is my r. What would sine of theta be? Now, I know what you're saying. Wait a minute. Isn't theta this big angle out here? Yes, but the triangle's not there. The triangle is right here. So we use theta here. That whatever this angle is, the answer is the same as this angle here. But we have now a triangle. Okay? So we're going to use, but they call that the reference angle. Write that down. Reference. Reference angle. We always use the reference angle that gets perpendicular to the x-axis. So I'm going to write perpendicular x-axis. That's the angle I want. I do not want this angle. That's not perpendicular to the x. That's perpendicular to the y, and that's crazy talk. We want perpendicular to the x-axis. That way I drop it at right angle there. So look at that triangle. What letter is considered opposite? of this small theta here, not this one here. What, what is considered opposite if this is x? What would that measurement be if the ordered pair was x comma y? This went to x, goes up to y. Not one person can see it? There are not many letters on the screen there. Y comma y. Well, no, one letter. Why? That's the opposite. What's the hypotenuse called here? X. Nope. Um, 
The what? R. R. R is the one coming from the origin, zero, zero. It's a radius of a circle. It acts as the hypotenuse of that triangle that I dropped here in quadrant two, okay? So, we li so now memorize this. When you're looking at the, 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 the circle, it's y over r. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. What's adjacent of this angle right here? X over R. Any magic about tangent? Take a guess. Tangent would be what? It's Y over X. Memorize these. Because this is, helps you for any angle. Yes, sir. Are you serious? Can you get through some notes first? Where's your notes? Let me see your notes. Uh, you get caught up in notes and let me know. Yes, sir. Cosecant, again, guys, is just the reciprocal of y over r. So I'm just going to go r over y is cosecant. Secant would be r over x. And let me guess, x over y for cotangent. Now we're going to do a problem. What if our point was at 9, negative 2. So I'm going to draw that. 9, negative 2 would be out here at 9, and then I'm going down to negative 2. There's my point. It's negative 1? Oh, gee wheeze. Okay, I'm so glad you saw that. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, negative 12. It's way down here. So the, the ray that I'm going to draw from the origin has to go through that point. And in order to have created that ray, this had to open up a lot. See that? It's a big angle. But I don't need the big angle. I only need the angle that I have when I take this and drop it I know this distance here is a 9. This distance here is an 11. I know it's negative, and I'll tell you what we do with negative in a minute. Okay. What happened? Oh, 12. Sorry. I did it wrong again. I quit. I think I'll take the next three days off. I know you're saying, take it, take it. Actually, that's what usually happens when I say that. Even in calculus, I say, I think I'll take tomorrow off. Yes, you should. I said, wow, that's love. Oh. So there's my triangle, guys. And the reference angle is here, inside the triangle. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's the reference angle. So what we want to do is find the exact values of the, all trigonometric functions. Well, we have all the formulas there. You have all the numbers. Just be careful. 12 is a negative 12. So make sure you're using the negative 12, even though the distance is still 12. So sine of theta should be, here's theta, here's theta. Opposite is what? Y. Yes, but what's the y value? Negative 12. Negative 12. Over the radius. Well, I wish I'd know what the radius is. Doggone it. I need to do more work. I wish I'd have known I needed more work. Okay. How am I going to get R? You're going to do, what's that called? Okay, so let's do it. Let's do, here's a shortcut. You, R squared, or R is equal to the square root of a negative 12 squared, that's 144, plus the 9 squared, which is 81. Would someone be so kind as to add those numbers with your calculator, please? 144 plus 81? It is 2.5. Square root of 225 is? 15. So I know my radius of that circle that's going all the way around is 15. So there it is, 15. Wait, what did you write in the, in the square root? Is that 
I, yeah, my, my pen is real. It's not my, it's my, the Google iPad. I wrote 144, 144 okay. and 81. And 81 81. Yeah, because that was this number squared plus this number squared. And it added up to 225 according to Luciano. Okay. And then he did the square root and got 15. So 15 becomes my R. And so there's my sine. Well, while I'm at it then, cosine, then now we did the hard work. Nine cosine, say it again? Nine over, 15. Nine over 15. Good job, Luciano. Tangent? It's negative 12 over 9. Are, are you paying attention, guys, how fast he's doing this? Who can, who can be faster than him for cosecant? What's cosecant? Oh, it's, it's uh, 15 over 9. Yeah, but what are the numbers? 15 over 12. So can I put the negative anywhere I want? Negative 15 over 12? Yes? Yeah, 15 over 9. With the negative. And secant of theta would be what? 15 over 9. Oh, positive? Yes. 15 over 9. And cotangent of theta? Say it again. Nine over oh, I think I think you're right. Why am I even doubting you? Negative nine over twelve. Say it again. Oh, wait a minute. Why did I do all my answers up there? Why did you stop me? I thought I don't know. I thought they were doing something else after we talked. About, I thought this was all my work. I only needed to do Pythagorean theorem in that whole spot, and I squeezed it all in. Tangent again, Luciano. It's negative twelve over nine. Does that make sense? You can put the answers in the right place. I hope nobody sees this and laughs at me. Uh, number two. Yeah, I know it is. Alice, while you're over there, could you get me a pen on my desk? Thank you. Oh, do you have tape, sir? I have a piece. You got some tape up there and my thing. Please. All right. Number two. So it says we got a, a point A at negative 6, negative 2. Let me draw that. X, Y plane. Go left 6. Go down 2. That makes it a negative 2. There's my point right here. That's my point A. Draw a line from the origin. That's called my R. The angle was created by going all the way around to here. And when you look into that triangle, I know that the distance this way was a negative 6. And the distance down is the y value, negative 2. Do you agree? Yes. And theta goes where? Where does theta go? The right nope. The right angle is here. It stays right. Okay. Yeah. Like yes, perfect. It's a, I, I, when I zoomed in, I see it was really ugly. So theta goes there. So if you want to make a better picture, you have my permission that I have this triangle, right angle here, negative 6, negative 2, and there's my R. I need R. Pythagorean theorem to save the day. R is the square root of what two numbers? Got to square those, though. It's a negative 6 squared. Can't be negative, because it's two negatives being multiplied. 36 plus 4. R is the square root of 40. 
which we can change that to r is square root of 4 times square root of 10, which is 2 square roots of 10. That's actually the best r to write, 2 square roots of 10. Now, let's do all trig functions. If this is 2 square roots of 10, what is sine going to be? Remember the angles here. No, you have to go y opposite over hypotenuse. There it is. Out of 10 points, if that was a 10-point problem, you get 7 points because you haven't simplified it yet. So what would it become? The 2's cancel, right? Negative 1 over the square root of 10. You still don't get 10 points. I didn't know we had to simplify. Well, we should always try. Sometimes I'm nice and I say, you, well, for right now, you know. Okay, that's okay. Sometimes I get lazy. Anyway, I don't do it anything. So is that full 10 points now? No. What do I have to do? The thing. The thing. Start letter R. No, I don't want to flip it. Rationalize the what? The denominator. So square root of 10 over square root of 10. And some of you can do that in your head. You don't have to write it out. You can probably see that it's going to be a negative square root of 10 over 10. Because square root of 10 times square root of 10 is square root of 100. So there's your sign. Negative square root of 10 over 10. All right. Cosine. Let's pick, this speed. Let's pick the speed up. Cosine. Adjacent over hypotenuse. Over 2 squared of 10. And again, guys, the 2 cancels out and make that a negative 3 over the square root of 10. And again, I have to rationalize that becomes negative 3 square roots of 10 over 10. Aren't you glad your algebra teacher taught you, your algebra 2 teacher taught you that? How about tangent? How do you get it? Opposite is what? Negative 2 and adjacent was? Negative six. Now, oh yeah, it does reduce to a third. Okay. Now, how easy is it to get the reciprocals? Cosecant. Are you going to flip the negative, negative square root of 10 over 10, or are you going to flip the negative 1 over the square root of 10? Negative 2 over Wait, what? Which one are you going to flip? Are you going to flip this one? Or are you going to flip this one? That one. Why? Because negative negative So you may as well take the one where the negative was, or negative came about? You mean the... If you put the, if you put the negative one the Right, you mean the, the radical goes to the top yeah. when I flip it. Yeah, it saved me some work. I didn't even go. Why? Because all the bathrooms are locked. Tell me about it. I'm having this problem every day. Seek it. I would not flip the best answer. That's the best answer for cosine, but it's not the best answer for secant because I got to flip it. So personally, I would choose this step here, flip that one. That gives me a negative square root of 10 over what? Three, I think. So if you do all your steps, you can make your life easier. Does it matter about cotangent? It does matter? Well, not really, because it's just like three over one, three. Three. Okay, so there's very, two very good problems. That's all he has on that page, is two problems. Well, there's a lot of thinking, though. Uh, moving on. Signs. Oh, I like this. I like this, because 
I want to know if I'm in quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. You have to realize that your trig values can be positive or negative in different places. I'm going to give you my, my, my sentence to memorize. Quadrant one stands for all. Quadrant two stands for student. Quadrant three stands for take. And quadrant four stands for calculus. All students take calculus, meaning in quadrant one, every trig function is positive here in quadrant one. The sine is positive, the cosine is positive, the tangent is positive, the cosecant is positive, everything. But in quadrant two, only the sine, which also goes with cosecant, only the sine is positive. Only. The rest are negative. We're going to see why that's true. Quadrant three, T stands for? Only the tangent is positive in quadrant three. And cotangent, because they're brothers, okay? Quadrant four, take a guess. Cosine. Only the cosine and her sister, the secant, are positive in that quadrant. Why is it important to know? Because you're going to draw your triangle in these different quadrants, and you're going to find these trig values. It's nice to say I don't care about the negatives because in the end I know which ones are positive and which ones are negative. I don't have to always be so careful. I'll still try to be careful, but... So quadrant one, only the sine, and I'm going to put cosecant also. Oh, I'm so bad. I was just seeing if Alice was paying attention because she'd been absent, and we need to make sure she's uh, pulling her own weight. All trig functions are. Quadrant two was sine and his brother, the cosecant. Quadrant three is only the tangent, positive. Uh, identify the functions that are positive. Okay, tangent and, and, and his brother, the cotangent. And in quadrant four, it was the cosine and her sister, the secant. Because they're just flips of each other. I need to sign some of these in advance. Moving on. Oh, wait, they cheated. They stole my line. Remember the phrase, all students take calculus. Okay. Now, look at number three. If cosine of theta is zero, this is a true statement. Luciano, you need to take your notes. Yes, sir. Why don't you go to the restroom? Why did I let you go? Why? I said, get your notes caught up. You let me go because I was answering it all for you. Close the computer and get your notes on your paper, please. If cosine of theta is greater than zero, which quadrants could the terminal side of theta be? So let me ask you a question. If I draw my xy plane and cosine has to be greater than zero, does that mean positive? Where in the world are cosines positive? Four. Definitely four. Yes. And one. and one. Who said that? I knew it was you because that was all. So pay, take a look at that picture. I drew the two triangles where I could have positive cosines. And the reason cosines positive in both of those, the x value, remember that formula, x over r? Well, X's are always positive. R is always positive. Which quadrant could the terminal side... Oh, I just answered it. You said quadrant one and quadrant four. That was easy. Number four. If tangent was less than zero, that means negative. What term, where could the terminal sides be? Where would I could go? 
No, in one, all trig functions are positive. Two, only the sine is positive. So you're right. That terminal side could be in this quadrant. There it is. Or where else? Four, because why? Only the cosine's positive. So yeah, I could also go all the way around to here. You're right. One and four. You're good. Terminal side is where the angle stopped right here, or it stopped here. That's the terminal side. We had those definitions before. If secant is less than zero, that means negative, which quadrants could the terminal side of theta lie? Well, let's see. Two, because only sine is positive, right? So two, and what'd you say? Three, because all students, only tangent's positive, so everything else. Is she the only one that sees this? It's amazing. It is hard. It is hard. Don't get me wrong. I don't think I learned it on the first. Why is your computer still open? I'm trying to finish these cons. I'm so sorry. Finish it later. Sorry, I understand. What con are you finishing? Oh, Oh, Luciano. I'm up. <laughs> really? All the logs and exponential stuff? Oh, I quit. You're, why did I stay past December? Uh, why four? Only, oh yeah, is that what she said? She told me that, didn't she? No, she told me two and three. No, we're talking about the Oh, oh, okay. You mean if sine is negative and cotangent is positive, oh, that's hard. If sine is negative, what I would do is, is label where sine is negative and then exclude the quadrant that cotangent is not positive. So where could sine be negative? It has to be in 3 and 4. Why? Because sine is positive here and all are positive here. So the other two must be where it's negative. Okay. So which of those... And if you don't like the word cotangent, think tangent. Doesn't matter. Cotangent and tangent, they're brothers. So where in the world is tangent going to be positive there? Three. Yeah, but one's not one of the ones that... I only have, I only have these two to look at. Oh, so just three. Just the three. Exactly. Because it had to be and. Both had to be true. Sign had to be negative. Oh. That occurred in 3 and 4. So what I, what I do is I break it down and do 3 and 4. And then I say to myself, which one of those would the cotangent be uh, positive? And all students take tangents positive in the third. So that's my answer right there. That's how I do it. I'm not saying it's the best way, but I'm old and that's how I've got it done. Oh, that? Yeah, because I don't know what that says. Okay, which one do you want to see? Like all, four all four. trig quadrants. <laughs> all trig. All trig. Then sine and their brother cosecant. Okay, so then tangent and its brother cotangent. And then the fourth is cosine and her sister secant. Uh -huh. Why is what? I'm just trying to be, you know, equitable. I'm, I'm, I just like to add some humor to this to make you question things, Natalie. I didn't think anybody would really ask me, though, why is cosine feminine? And you actually go, because cosine's feminine. Really? You just had my back. He had my back, that's all. All right. 
if the given information, use the given information to find the exact values of the five remaining trig functions of theta. One, two, three. Okay, so they didn't list sine because it's already here. Sine of theta would have been up here, which was, according to him, 8 over 17, right? Hello, Ellis? So I need to do the other five based on this. So what I want to do and is, is draw where sine could be 8 over 17. It's positive. Where could it be? Could be in 1. And sine is also positive where? In 2. But one of those does not support the second condition. Which of those is tangent negative? It's in 2. Because tangent's not positive until you get to quadrant 3. So this is not going to be in my answer. I'm only dealing with quadrant 2. And now watch this, guys. If sine is 8 over 17, this would have to be 8, and this would have to be 17. Theta. Does it make sense? So I need to find all the trig functions. What am I missing in order to do all of them? Okay, could someone quickly do the... Do, okay, this is different now than, than the hypotenuse. Peyton, this time you do this. You got to do square root of the... I don't know. Oh, you already have the answer. You're good. 17 squared minus 8 squared. And you that's what you did, Alice? Uh -huh. And you got a 15? Uh -huh. Because it's the hypotenuse squared minus the leg squared. And Alice says it's 15. So now I can label this as 15. I have everything. Oh, wait, wait, Alice. Do me a favor. Would 15 be positive or negative? Thank you. No, it's not your bad. You did exactly right. And the thing about it is, if you know where the functions are positive, then you don't even have to worry about the negative. But I want to be on the safe side. I'm going to mark it to negative x. So let's quickly fill this in. What's the cosine of that angle, that reference angle right here? Is it, what's the cosine though? Adjacent over hypotenuse. It, but remember, cosine is negative there, right? So if you forgot the negative, ask yourself, if she just writes 15 over 17, because we didn't write the negative, she needs to ask herself, is cosine positive in quadrant two? No. Only sine is positive in quadrant two. I lost my negative. Why did I lose my negative? Because I forgot to put the negative here. So you have two ways of catching your mistakes. What's the tangent of that theta? Eight over negative 15. Yep, negative eight over 15. And secant means I flip this original answer of sine, or I have it written up here. Isn't that cosecant? Yeah, cosecant is flipping the, the sine, yes. Seven, 17 over 8. Who's asking? Me. Bring the path back. Why is, it, why is it? I got to flip the sign. Sign was 8 over 17. It was stated in the problem. So I rewrote it up here just to remind myself. So I'll write 7 to 8. Now, secant is just flipping this one right here. Negative 17 over. I always put the negative on top. I know some of you guys are putting wherever you want. <laughs> Cotangent is flipping the tangent. That would be a negative. What are you looking at? Oh, what did I write? It's over 50. What I, I must have looked at the other problem. And cotangent would... Okay, that's the one I was looking at by mistake. 
negative 15 over the 8. You agree? Yes. You know, when I was doing this for the college, this was very hard even for the college level kids. It was hard. Cotangent of theta has to be a negative 4. So this is hard, thinking in cotangent. You have permission to flip it and say tangent of theta is what? <laughs> no, just tell me what tangent is based on if that's my cotangent. Oh, um, just flip it. One over <laughs> four. So negative 1 over 4. I'm going to draw where that would go. So where is tangent negative? Two and all students take. So it can't be, isn't it positive in, in all is one and three, so it has to be two and four? Well, where is, where is tangent negative, I asked you. Now you got to say, where is secant negative? Oh, yeah, positive. So the, the answer I want is up here, right? Yeah, you're right. I, I, I followed you like the Pied Piper, and I was the rat that went over the cliff. Thanks. There it is. That's where it's going to be. And label the numbers that I know. The reason I flipped it and turned it to tangent, because cotangent, I get confused. But it's the same, it's the same triangle. So, uh, which of those numbers for this theta will be get negative? The one or the four? No, four. Uh, not really, I don't think. Wait, what? Why not? Because tangent is opposite over adjacent, right? Opposite over adjacent. And this one is the negative answer because it goes down. So that gets the negative one. The 4 has to be positive, so it goes up there. No, no, I flip. You can put the negative wherever you want, but when I go to my triangle, I have to make sure that I label the sides opposite over adjacent. In this case, you would have to have said adjacent over opposite. Doesn't really matter. It's still, you're looking at a, a negative 4 over a 1, you got to decide, does the negative go to the negative 4 or does the negative go to the negative 1? So a lot of people just write the negative out front and, and they don't make any decisions. They just do this and say, I'll take care of the negative when I look at my triangle. If you look at the triangle, the y values are in negative because it goes down. That's the opposite side. So, so in that of data, or I want to say, look look at the uh, this way as the cotangent, mm -hmm. then that would be adjacent over opposite. Well, my adjacent is that value here. That's a positive x value. Again, I chose to look at tangent. It, made, it was easier for me to think of opposite over adjacent. It's the same thing if you say cotangent is the negative 4 over 1. Here's my theta. What is the cotangent of that, that theta right here? Just go ahead and answer yourself right now if you don't believe me. Here's your angle. What is the cotangent of that angle? Look at the picture. Isn't, the, isn't it the adjacent over the opposite? 4 over a negative 1. Is that the same thing as a negative 4 that the problem said? It's the same. So that was written correctly. All right, moving on here. This takes a lot of practice, so you might want to redo these problems on your own. Hypotenuse, really quick. Square root of what? 4 squared plus the negative negative still is positive, so plus 1. 
That would be what? Square root of? How much? Yes. Yes. Square root of 17. So let's see here. Sine of my theta. Sine of my theta. Yes. Negative 1 square root of square root of what? 17. And of course we can't leave that answer because it's not rationalized. So it becomes a negative square root of 17 over 17. And the cosine of that triangle? The cosine is adjacent over the hypotenuse. 4 over the square root of 17, which turns into 4 square roots of 17 over 17. Tangent, negative 1 over 4. Now, when you flip these, flip the easiest one that leaves the radical in the... the Take the one that the radical is already in the bottom, so it flips it to the top. So, Peyton, what am I flipping for cosecant? Yeah, I'm doing the cosecant of theta. So, when it flips, what's the answer? Oh, yeah, that's basically, I don't have to put the one, do I? No. How about the secant? Now I need that 4, right? Mm -hmm. Positive square root of 17 over 4. So now they're all done. Is, I would say these are a lot more difficult than what we've been doing. I'd be lying to tell you that it's not. All right? I'm going to listen carefully, guys. It's cosecant, and I told you, you don't have to think cosecant if you don't want to, because some of you won't remember that cosecant is hypotenuse over the adjacent. I like to just say, I'll flip this and say sine of theta is negative 2 over the square root of 5. And I'm not going to rationalize it right now because I'm going to draw my triangle and label exactly what I see. First of all, that's negative. What quadrants is sine negative? not 1, because everything's positive. It's not 2, because sine is positive. Say it again. 3 and 4 are my choices. Which one of those is cosine negative? Has to be here. So here's my, here's my triangle, right here. Does that make sense? A little bit, right? So there's my angle. And also, I choose to talk about sine instead of cosecant. So I need a negative 2 and a square root of 5. I know for a fact that, it's, that the 2 has to go here and the square root of 5 has to be here. Wait, why? Because why? opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite. Negative 2? I was going to ask you. I said, I know for a fact there's a 2 here. But the question is, which of those numbers get that negative? And you're right. It's the 2. Tell me why. It's going down, and hypotenuse is never negative. Right? Right? So all I got to do now is find out what the adjacent of this angle will be. And I'm going to do, do the work because it looks like real hard. It's going to be the square root of square root of 15 squared. Five. five? Oh, yeah, 5. I'm blind. Plus a negative 2 squared. What is a square? Was that a minus? I did put a minus. Yeah, yeah, I just put it there so you all see it, that I'm squaring both. If I was, if I was by myself... I wouldn't have written any of that. I would have said uh, just a plain 5 and just a plain 2, or a 4, I mean. Because when you square a square root, out pops out the 5. But I, I wrote it both so that you, 
somebody else could say, oh, it's a square root of 5 being squared. It's the negative 2 being squared. That turns into the square root of 9, which is simply a what? Three. Square root of 9, which is 3. So I'm going to go up here and put a 3 right here. There it is. I was going to ask you that. That's my next step. You hear what she said? She was very careful to say, yeah, it's a 3, but be very careful. It's going left, so it's a negative 3. Yay, you're back. How was it? It was easy. I figured it was. For you. So, yes. Yes. It is. It was, I did use it, but I already had the hypotenuse. So when you square root it, it's square root of the hypotenuse squared plus the other leg. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe I was wrong. Was it a plus or is it supposed to be a minus? I think I was supposed to do a minus, guys. Alice, you didn't catch it? I No, but it doesn't stay negative, though. It becomes a positive because I'm squaring it. Uh-oh. Yeah, I think I'm wrong. So it's, it's a square root of 5 minus 4. Yeah. Thanks for making me look at it again, Steffi. What's 5 minus 4? One. What's the square root of 1? One? One. Okay, I think three. this is not a, neg- not a 3, but a negative 1. Why am I saying negative? It's on the left. All right, uh, you guys are making a lot of noise. That means the bell's going to ring, like in six minutes, guys. My watch said six. I want you to finish this up, because if you looked at the, the agenda up there, it said selected problems. So finish that problem. The triangle's already there. The homework paper. We're going to talk about still solving triangle. Yes, somebody had a question? Yes? No? All right. We're still solving triangles, but we're finding trig values in any quadrant, which we were doing that the other day, but we're going to be using reference angles. You don't have to write all this. Reference angles and the unit circle. That's new. The unit circle. That, that, this is kind of interesting. So reference angles, we already talked about it. It's the small angle that is from the horizontal x-axis all the way to the terminating side of the angle. Even if the angle's over here, that's still called a reference angle. Even though 30 is still 30, it doesn't really change. But what if it was uh, uh, 390? 390 would have gone all the way around to 360 and then 30 more. So even though theta was 300, what is this doing? Theta was 390 degrees. I'm not going to use 390. I'm only going to use the measurement from here to here. So I'll be using the reference angle as 30 degrees. So even if it's in quadrant one, I still can have a reference angle. So I look at number one, 150. 150, you know, is less than 180. So I'm going to draw this. I'm just pretending. It's out here. From the origin, straight out. That looks to me like it could be 150 degrees. But I don't care about the 150 degrees. I care about the little guy right here, reference. Theta, I'll, I'll put a little r here. Is it tiny up there? It's you know what? It's frozen. No, it's frozen. I'm zooming. No, you're not. I'm writing now, and you're not seeing anything. Yeah, 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 you are writing it. See, you're writing. Where? I don't see it writing. Look, sir. Look, keep writing. Oh, keep writing. You can see. It's, just, it's not frozen. It's just weird. 
It's, no, it's, it, something's frozen on. Okay. So let me just get out of it and let it. Let me get rid of that that writing. Yeah, it's so. It it should have. It was fine yesterday. I thought. All right. Technical difficulties have been averted. We're back to the 150 degrees, and this is. I'm going to call this theta. I'll put a little r so you know that it's reference angle. I'll put the r, but most of the time we just call it theta anyway. What would that angle be? What angle would I consider my reference angle? See, you guys already know. What else do they want to know? For each angle of theta in standard form, the reference angle is the positive acute angle formed by the terminal side and the x-axis. Sketch each angle, then find its reference angle. Okay, we did it. All right, 315, number two. What quadrant would it end in? Uh, third one. Nope. I mean the fourth. Uh, second. Nope. Fourth. Fourth quadrant. Yeah. Because this is 270 degrees, this is 360 degrees, mm -hmm. has to be between those two numbers. So here goes. I'm just estimating. You don't have to be exact. As long as you connect from the origin out like that, I'm good to go. To me, that is close enough to 315. Doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not going to measure it. I'm not going to use a protractor. But the reference angle would be this bad boy right here. That would be the reference angle that I'm looking for. So I'm going to, theta, it will be used as what? What would that angle be? How much? 45? How'd you get it? She was very smart. She said, all the way is 360, so I take 360 degrees, take away my 315 degrees, that does give me the 45 degrees. Can always count on Alice. All right, how about a negative angle? That's a little harder, but we, we only did negative angles one day. Where is negative 240 going to be? Ooh. Only one person? Yes, second. It would be the second? Mm. Rest of you? I didn't do the attendance, so I'm going to give you a problem, two problems to do on your own while I do attendance. Oh, no, you said everybody's here except for? Angel, Catherine. Oh, that's too many. Okay, I won't remember. Negative 240, so watch me. Negative 90, that's that. Negative 180, that's that. Negative 270, too much, right? Yeah. Too much, so I got to back away and not go all the way. How's this? From the origin, all the way out. And where would the theta be written at? Um, here? No. Here? Yeah. No. No. Yes. No. Actually, that angle is not correct. How about over here? No. How about here? No. That's it. Let me get rid of all those thetas. Cover the evidence. Hide, hide the evidence. Well, I can't hide. There it goes. Theta is here. Remember, guys, the reference angle, this is a, one of the most important lessons you're going to have um, when it comes to trig. You got your x-axis measuring up to where the terminal side will be. That's the positive acute angle that I'm talking about. Whatever that positive angle is, how, do, how would I get that angle? How would I get that angle? Theta. What would the math look like? It's negative angle. So I had to go this way. Negative 90. Theta is always bounded by the x-axis, has to always be one of the legs. And then the terminal side where the angle stopped moving is the other side. Has to always be that. I'm glad you asked that question because it can't be possible that everybody gets it that quick. Others have questions. So how am I going to get it? What's the math? No. Nope. You read this carefully, it says that the, it's always a positive acute angle. The reference is always a positive acute angle. So plus, plus 270. But that's not acute. Oh. 
Plus 270. That's not acute. Yes, it is. Oh, what did you say? Plus 270 because I don't cancel. Oh, you're adding 270. Yes. Oh, I didn't know what you did. You took negative 240 plus the 270. That'll work. That gives me what? Uh, okay, I thought you were giving me the answer was positive 270. That is a 30-degree angle right here. That is 30 degrees. Good job, Luciano. Uh, let's do a uh, rate all oh, radians. I knew they were going to come back and do radians with us. Now, if you're like me, I can do it both ways in my mind. But it's kind of like learning Spanish. When a person is learning Spanish, and all your language is mainly English, as you speak Spanish, you're still thinking English, trying to get the words out. So as I'm thinking of 5 pi over 3 in radians, I might want to think in degrees. And this is what I do to think in degrees. I need to have memorized pi over 3, and we've done that. You should have done it by now. I think I'm going to start giving some speed quizzes on what you should have memorized. Pi over 3 is how big in degrees? You, sh you should know it without doing the, 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 the work. It is 60. And you know, Gabriel, I know you're right. Because pi stands for 180, and 180 divided by 3 is 60. So what I'm really looking at is 5 times 60 degrees. So for me, 5 times 60 is how much? 360. No. I mean. 300. So where's 300 at? That's easy in my head. I know where five, five, uh, 300, oh. wait. 300. Where's 300 at? What quadrant? Fourth quadrant. Fourth quadrant. It's got to be down here. So, so I connect it. There it is. So reference angle is this guy right here. And if this was 300, what was the degree measure? Of 60 degrees. But I got bad news for you. I need to put it in radians. But you should have that memorized. It's 2 over pi. I mean, 3 over pi. Wait, no. Pi over 3. It's just pi. We just said it, guys, that pi over 3 is 60. So my reference angle is pi over 3. Now, there's another way of doing it. I don't know if you will like it or not, but you could do this. If, if it's pi divided by 3, then here's, I'm going to take this amount, and divide that in three parts. One, two, three. But I need to go to f f five. Oh, wait, that's two, yeah, six, another 60. Four, five. Get it? One, two, three, four. Four, 60 t four times that measurement was counted off. Because you know there's three of them in 180. So there's one, two, three. One, two, three. So you just count how many do I want. I want five of them. One, two, three. I did it wrong. One, two, three, four, five. There's my five pi over three. I like the degrees better. It, to me, it's less thinking. That is radians. The answer was pi over 3. But I like to think, it's like when I was really learning Spanish for the first time when I was in college, I, I, I was always trying to say a conversation, but I was thinking in English, which it doesn't click. When you learn a foreign language, it doesn't click for some time before. My, like my wife now, when she's learned English really well, uh, when she was learning English, she was thinking in Spanish. Now she's so pro proficient in it, a lot better than I am in Spanish. She doesn't think in Spanish now. She thinks in English. Sir, yes. Um, let's say we give you, can we simplify the pi over uh, three to degrees? No, pi over three is already simplified. It stands for 60 degrees. Yeah, I know, but what would just be the answer 60 degrees? Is that 
No, you got to, whatever the problem was in, you have to put the answer in. So number five is the same problem, except have you memorized what pi over six is? Who said that? Gabriel's the only one that's going to get 100 on his speed test. That means it's 180 degrees, if you look at it that way, divided by 6 is 30 degrees. Now, think about this for a minute. I have 7 30 degrees. 7 times 30 degrees. Well, so where's 210 at? It is. It's down here. It's down here. Or you could say this. There are six of them in pi. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we know that that was six of them. One pi over six, two pi over six, three pi over six, four pi over six, five pi over six. I messed up. One, two, three, four, five, six. One more pi over six. Seven pi over six. That's another way of, of figuring out where it is. I'd rather do the 210 like, like Luciano helped me do. 210. But then I know for a fact that 210 from 180 is how many degrees? 30, which is a pi over six, right? So my reference angle is pi over six. Again, how did I know? One pi over six. 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 6 pi over 6, because 6 pi over 6 is pi. One more pi over 6 to get down here. One more pi over 6. So it had to be pi over 6. But you pick, your, you pick the way you like it. Let's do another one. I know what, this guy, I know what she did to us. She made us look at a pi over 3, a pi over 6, and another one you're supposed to memorize, a pi over 4. Before Gabriel gives me the answer, if that means pi over 4, this 180 is divided into four pieces. One, two, three, four. I basically cut that 90 degrees in half. So what is a pi over 4? It is 45 degrees. But I got to go the other direction anyway because I need five of them. I got to go this way. One, how many do? One, two, three, four, five. I'm at that same place, but that way. So how are you going to do it? Well, it's a negative, though. Negative five times the 45 degrees. What did you say it was? He's got it. He's good. That's what it is in degrees, but what's this reference angle? It's one of those distances. Remember, I did it this way. I did, here's one, two, three, four. There should be four in, 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 in pi. Four. One more. Five. That's another pi over four. So my reference angle is pi over four. I know you're saying, oh, I love radians. Jada, you Okay. I don't even know if you're awake back there. There you are. Use the reference angles and the trig function values for angles in special right triangles to find each trigonometric value. So, okay, we're not using unit circle right now. Well, we kind of are. Yeah, we still are. Let's see. Recall the signs of the functions in each quadrant. All students take calculus. By the way, it's all written up there now if you've seen it. All students take calculus, maybe it's up there. Or all students take care. Or all students uh, make it up yourself. Sine of 120. So I'm going to draw where 120 is. I think we've done it before. 120 is out here. Right? So watch the reference angle. <coughs> And I'm going I'm to drop a... Oh, um... Wait. No. No, 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 no. 
What's this angle here? 60. Okay, why is anybody else not helping? I, I got to move seats around. I think you're going to get seating charts. I got to move you all to like the first two rows here. Three rows. Yes, ma'am. I haven't even watched the first part of the lesson. You haven't watched what? The first part of the lesson. Like, I wasn't here last time. So I'm taking notes and then I'll do it again. Oh, okay. I believe you. Yeah, you were punished all week. <coughs> You're the only one that gets a reprieval. 60. 60. Luciano said 60. <coughs> I didn't bring my extra cough drops. Oh, I have one in the drawer. What I want you to do is... If that's a 60, guys, drop a perpendicular, put a right angle there. Actually, I wrote 60. I, I should move the 60 over. Let me, let me, oh. <coughs> let me get a cough drop too. Let me put the 60 here. 60. Drop a perpendicular, make a right angle. We learned that a special triangle says that opposite the 30 is the number 1. Are you listening? We learned that already. Where's 30 at? If this is 60, where's the 30 at? It has to be here. So I'm going to put a 1 right here. I'm going to put a 2 right here. I'm going to put a square root of 3 right here. One, two, square root of three is a special triangle. It always comes when you have a 30, 60 degrees in your triangle and a 90. Now, there's one thing I need to correct. One is not really a one in this picture. One should be a what? It's on the left side of the origin. Negative. It should be negative. So I'm going to add a negative. Now I'm ready to go. This was, Luciano did all the work. He calculated this to be a 60 degree angle. That's the reference angle. So I'm really going to do sine of 60 degrees now. I'm not going to do 120. I'm going to do sine of 60 using the numbers of this triangle. Opposite over hypotenuse. Your answer should be square root of 3 over 2. I didn't need that negative anyway. I would have needed it if I was doing cosine. This is extra. Cosine of 120 degrees, I'd be doing cosine of the 60 degrees, which would have been adjacent adjacent over hypotenuse, and that adjacent's negative, that would have been a negative one-half. So you go to your calculator, and if you type in cosine of 120, it's going to give you a negative answer. You should, nobody wants to prove it or not, but anyway, I'm telling you, you'd get that. Now if you type in sine of 120, you're going to get a bunch of decimals. But you can prove that it's right because, I, well, actually, did somebody show me the Inspire could convert it to the radical? Could someone try it? Sine of 120 degrees. And look at those decimals. Is there a way for your Inspire to convert that to a fraction of square root of 3 over 2? I would love to know if it's that powerful. If it's that powerful, then I, I will buy an Inspire just to have. But... Nobody? Okay. Yeah, well, you got decimals, didn't you? Yeah. And we don't know what that fraction is because it's obviously it's not a simple, it's an irrational number. Is there a way for the Inspire to convert that to the square root of 3 over 2? Somebody told me you could. None of you can. Okay. Next problem. If you want to prove that it's right, take that decimal answer, Steffi, just divide it by a square root of 3 and tell me what it gives you. I hope it gives me a half or 0.5. 0.5. 0.5. 0.5. 0.5. 0.5. 0.5. 0.5. 0.5. 0.5. 0.5. 0.5. 0.5. 0.5. 0.5. 0.5. 0.5. 0.5. 
There you go. Because what I just did, I took your answer and divided it by square root of 3. That cancels out the square root of 3s, leaving the 1 over 2. I was just checking to see if the calculator, I could use the calculator to check my work, in other words, to see if it is the square root of 3 over 2. Why am I telling you how to use your calculator? Yes. Yes. You've been so helpful today, Luciano. I can't even complain about you today. You've been very, very on top of things. Secant of 225. So I'm going to draw my triangle somewhere. Where is a 225 degree going to be? Quadrant, what? Three. Three. Down here. And so I need to figure out what my theta is going to be. What's my reference angle going to be? How are you going to do it? Personally, I would take the 225 and take away how much? 180. What does that give you? Oh, my friend, the 45 degrees. Now watch this. You watching, Peyton? Not when your head's down. Uh-huh. Okay. Here it goes. Drop my perpendicular. And we know that a 45-degree triangle has only two numbers in it. Do you remember? Well, yes, that's true. 45 degrees and 45 and a 90. Talk about the sides. It was 1, 1, square root of 2. However, those aren't really 1s. They are? They're both negative. This went left. This went down. And secant, if I recall correctly, secant was r over the x value from the last lesson. What is r in this problem? What is r? In that triangle? It is. It's the square root of 2 over the x value. So secant of the 45 in that quadrant would have been the square root of 2 over the negative 1 or negative square root of 2. Now, with Inspire, you guys are so lucky. Trigonometry button, scroll to secant, and type in 225. And then you're going to get a decimal number. Yes or no? No, use 225 to make sure we're in the right quadrant. Use the 225 because if you say the 45, it won't come out to negative. Okay, so uh, so then now go ahead and type in negative square root of 2 and see if it's the same answer. It's the same, answer. same answer. So you can use your calculator to check your work. And Steffi asked a good question. If, I know I wrote down 45, but remember, I'm in quadrant 3 with that 45. So I have to use those negatives. Number 9. Tangent of 11 pi over 6. Well, I know you guys aren't enjoying this. I know it's hard. But I know pi over 6 means 30. So if I go all the way across, that's, that's 6 of them. If I go all the way to the whole circle, that's 12 of them. Yeah, 6 and 6 is 12. Let me guess. I never did turn the... Oh, yes, I did. So it's, you know, it's a 30-degree angle. 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180. There's six of them. So if I go another six, it would take me all the way here. But I don't want to go all six of them. I only want to do 11 of them, so that means I have to stop at the 11th one, not the 12th. So that angle must be a pi over 6. But I interpret that to be 30 degrees. 
So if you're in your calculator right now, you have two choices. I turn it, I switch it over to radians. Or I think this through with degrees, since I know this is a 30 degree angle. It, okay, it'll be a 330 altogether. So I'm going to look at this reference angle and tangent of this triangle, if that's, you said that's 30, that would be, again, across the street from the 30 or the pi over 6 is a 1. The hypotenuse is a 2. The other side is a square root of 3, just like we did in the other problem except one of those numbers is not positive. Which one is it? One. That has to be a negative one. And I think it might matter because when I do the tangent of an 11 pi over 6, I'm only using this reference angle. So tangent means opposite over adjacent, right? Opposite over adjacent or... Wasn't it also y over x? Yes? And the y value is what? Negative 1. The x is square. So it's negative 1 over the square root of 3. If I rationalize it, negative square root of 3 over 3. Boy, that's a lot of work. We're still on the first page, and it seems like I'm dragging my feet. Cosecant of a negative 2 pi over 3. Now, again, two, pi over 3 means how many degrees? Oh, negative one. oh you're doing the whole thing? Oh, yeah, negative what? 120. That's fair. She can do that. Negative 120 means I go this way, and I stop before I get to the negative 180. I'm here. But now i got to figure out what is my reference angle. What's that angle right there? Because that's the angle I use for my calculations. And then I'll make a triangle here. So you said how big was it? 120? Negative 120. Yeah, but it's a 120. Yeah. So how many more would I need to get up to here? 60. So this is a 60 reference angle. So really, I'm thinking about the cosecant of a 60 degrees. However, be careful. I mean, maybe I should not be saying cosecant of 60. Maybe I should keep it as cosecant of a negative 2 pi over 3, which is where uh, Alice told me to put it right here. But let's label your triangle. This angle has to be 30, because 30 plus 60 is 90. So this has to be a 1. This has to be a 2. This has to be a square root of 3. Across the street from the 30 or the pi over 6 is always a 1. But two of those sides are negative. Which ones are they? The Got to put the negatives there because we're talking about this angle, not this angle. I mean, we're using this angle to draw the triangle, but I have to use the numbers on the outside. So what was secant on our paper the other day? Uh, cosecant was R over... Oh. R over Y, isn't it? Yes, I think it was. We did a secant a minute ago, didn't we? We put X for that one, remember? So R over Y. Or you could say hypotenuse over the opposite. If that, if that sounds better to you, hypotenuse over opposite, go for it. What's hypotenuse of this uh, reference angle? It's a 2. What's the opposite? So it's, neg it's a 2 over negative square root of 3. I'm going to put the negative on top and say 2 square roots of 3 over 3. If I rationalize. All right, take, take a deep breath. I'm going to give you one problem so I can go do the attendance. I might give you two. And I want you to work with people around you. I want to know the sine 
of a uh, one. I can't do that. That'd be silly. Three fifteen. Did we do three fifteen? No. Okay, and a cosine of of this will be fun for you. Uh, no, I better stick it with uh, three hundred. Uh, while I'm doing the attendance, I should hear a lot of talking. There should be half of you getting it wrong and half of you getting it right, helping the ones that are wrong. I will pause the recording. I'll just work out two more with you. But all the problems I can do does not make you any better unless you go home and do every one of them over again. 315 degrees is in quadrant... It's bigger than 270, smaller than 360. I'm over here, Luciano. Yeah, I know, but I'm writing that down. So I got to decide how big this reference angle is. It's a 45. So without any thinking, guys, watch me. One, one, square root of two. And one of those sides is negative. This one which might be important because we're talking about sine. Sine and cosine will be different then. And sine of this 45 is opposite over, don't help me out, opposite of the square root of two, equals two, opposite over the square root of two. Now if you look at the chart up there, 315 is up there. It's on that circle. But it's going to be rationalized, most likely. Negative square root of 2. Can you find it on that circle? Can you find 315 degrees? Oh, yeah. Silly me. I didn't finish the work. <laughs> Oops. I got excited with the square root of 2. Now, we're at 300, and maybe that's not a good chart to keep up on the wall because you're just going to start cheating and look up there all the time. But while we're learning it, it's okay to have it up there, but I'll probably have to take it down. No. no. Please. I don't care about pretty. You know what, my wife, cosine of 300, what quadrant is 300 in? Again, 4. So I just draw this triangle here in 4 and have to figure out what kind of angle is this reference angle. How many? 60. Has to be 60. If you think about 360 minus the 300, that's 60. So watch me. I know this has to be 30. So that means this has to be 1. This has to be 2. This has to be a square root of 3. But one of those numbers is negative. Two. Nope, the, no. the hypotenuse is never negative. No, the square root of 3 is negative. Mm -hmm. So if I'm doing cosine of this picture right here, of this angle right here, I know it means adjacent over hypotenuse. What's adjacent no. of this angle? One, one over 2. See how fast we can do them? As long as the reference angles are nice, perfect uh, angles from the special triangles. All right, enough of that. There's four more special angles that you have to know. Is what if your angle is at zero degrees? Right here. What if the point goes through zero? It never opens up. Here's what I want you to do. Pay attention, ladies. If you're on this circle here, I'm going to call this a unit circle. Unit circle. Unit means one. The radius is always one. One. 
one, one. That's a unit circle. So when I'm laying on the x-axis going this way, and that distance is one, then the ordered pair is one comma zero. Are you listening? At one comma zero, the first number, which is your x, stands for your cosine answer. Why is it? Because it's x over r. Remember, cosine of theta is x over r, but since r is always a 1, it's just the x. Sine of theta is y over r, and since r is always a 1, it's just a y. So this 0 stands for the sine answer. Now, tangent of 0 degrees tangent of this angle is y over x. In this case, it's going to be the 0 over the 1. 0 over the 1. So that's how you do, that's how you do the tangent. You take this second number divided by the first number, the y over the x. Was he asking me to do all the trig functions? Uh, no, he's just talking about he's just talking about what the angles are. So look at here, 90 degrees or pi over two goes up here. So my ordered pair is up here. See what I'm saying? My dot's there. Still a unit circle. Still a unit circle. The radius is still one, one, one. Even here, one. I can that ordered pair, guys, is zero comma one. So without me even showing anything, what's the cosine of a 90 degree angle? Zero. Thank you. What's the sine of 90? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> sine is the y. I just wrote it over here. Sine is always going to be the y value when you're on the x and y axes. Those are called quadrantal angles. You're on the... You're on the the walls of the quadrants. So what's the sine of 90? What? One? What did someone say with the cosine? Oh, I already asked the sine. Zero. zero. She had said zero. And then it's so what's tangent? That's gonna be a hard one. What's y over x? Say it again? There's no two in there. It's either a zero and a one. No, but we only using zero over one. I'm saying there's no twos. Y over X. You're saying one divided by zero is zero? It's undefined. That's right. You're going to find out that tangent is undefined at 90 degrees. What was the tangent of the zero degrees? Are you seeing the... I mean, yeah. yeah, tangent would be zero. And you can check it with your calculator. All right, 180. The ordered pair for 180 is, we'll call it right here. There's my unit circle. The radius is always one. The radius is one. The radius is one. The radius is one. That ordered pair, all you really care about, what's the ordered pair? Negative 1, comma, 0. Peyton, what's the cosine of 180? It is. That's the cosine answer. Jada, what's the sine of 180? I didn't hear you. It is zero. That's the sign. Always will be. If it's, on the, if it's on the wall, it's always the X and the Y. So the hard one, Gabriel, what is the tangent of 180? Tangent is Y over X. Not this time. Nope. 
Yes. Is that Peyton? Yes. Zero divided by a negative one is still zero. No, it's not, no, zero is not undefined. Zero is a value. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's bad news. All right. 270 is on it is on a, one of the, the axes. Here it is. That ordered pair is zero, negative one. So Luciano, what's the cosine of 270? Two zero. It is. It's that zero number. Ha, Fatima, what's the sine of 270 degrees? It certainly is. Alice, what's the uh, tangent of 270? Uh, undefined. It's undefined. Why? Why? Because y over x gives me negative 1 over 0. Undefined. So now we can find the six trig functions for any quadrantal angle we want. Next page. Okay, I'm way ahead of him. Now he talks about the unit circle. And since the radius is always 1, watch this. Sine of theta is y. y over 1. Cosine will always be the x. Tangent is always y over x when you're on a unit circle. Cosecant, I got to flip the y. Flip it. No. Ne Reciprocal does not mean change signs. I got to flip the y over 1. It becomes 1 over y. 1 over x. Cotangent. X over y. And the coordinates of P can be written as, well, it's always going to be coordinates of P are always X comma Y. Whatever the X is, comma Y. So that's where this picture comes in. You see it's on the wall there. It calls it the 16-point circle. It has every special angle and quadrantal angle that we've studied today. We got our zero. Zero degrees or it's the same as 360 degrees, the same thing. Or it's zero radians, or it's two pi radians, depending on if you're doing radians. There's my first small angle, 30 degrees. Then the next angle after that is 45 degrees, then it's 60 degrees, then there's the 90 degrees. You see how that's broken up? And this chart gives you both the degrees and the radians. Using this circle, and calling that, what are you going to do here? He says the unit circle is for use to map uh, special angles and their multiples. In other words, 45 is special, but 3 times 45 is, uh, what was that again? Uh, 135 is special because it's a multiple of 45. If you look over here, Here's the 45 degrees right here, 45 right here, and then I said the 3 what? The 3, or no, what, what was 45 times 3? 135? Yes, no? Mm -hmm. It's right here. See, it's there. It's 3 of the 45s, 3 pi over 4. They're all there. And as well as... The quadrantal, quad, I don't know how they spell it on their page, quadrantal angles. I should go back and look. It just means on the quadrant. It means, does, it says, huh? It says what does it say? Under. Oh, yeah, it does. And I spelled it right. Thank you, Steffi. For Isn't it the same answer? Twice? Same, yeah. Yeah, I guess so. If it's not, it doesn't matter to me. So now we're going to talk about trig values on, just on the unit circle because all of these are multiples of specials like I was doing earlier when I did the 315 and the 300. I was, I was doing the same thing, guys. I'm trying way ahead of her. So if I'm doing 135, you can look up here, find it, 
find 135, that was here. And supposedly you could find out what the X and the Ys are, but it gets kind of confusing in here. So personally what I do is I go over here, I just draw it and say it's 135 is here. The reference angle is a 45. Is that true or not? <coughs> Drop my perpendicular and label 1, 1, square root of 2. I don't really play the game of uh, make the radius 1 in this picture. You can. Let's see what the answer is going to be and see if our circle has it. What's the sign? Oh, this one has to be negative. What's the sign of this special angle? So this answer should be 1 over the square root of 2, which is square root of 2 over 2. Go back and look at the circle. Thank you. Put it right there. I don't think this circle is helping me with the square root of 2 over 2. Does that circle help? Yeah, all the ordered pairs are given. Find it. It's up there, right? Yeah. So the ordered pair for 135 is negative square root of 3 over 2, comma, square root of 2 over 2. Square root of 2, negative square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. So in order to get those, those numbers, you'd have to make your triangle and call the radius 1. And it's really kind of a lot of work to convert the x and the y. I would just prefer doing what I did. I mean, yeah, those are all the answers. That's the ordered pair for that circle. Negative square root of 2 over 2, comma, square root of 2 over 2 are the x and y values. And if you're on the unit circle, the x is the cosine, the y is the sine. Just like on the, on the, the fence, on the 0, the 90, the 270, all that, it's the same thing. If you're on the circle and it's a unit circle, those are the answers. A lot of your answers are up there. That's why I can't keep it up there. Because if I've done my job right, I've showed you that the answers are on that chart. We'd have to create it, though. It'd be a pain. And, and she didn't really lead us into figuring it out. Because you'd have to figure out what x would have to be, what y would have to be. So I'm just going to do them the same way that I was doing. I don't, I don't use the unit circle answers on the other. I don't do, ever do those. I'll look up there and go, wow, that's cool. That's my answer. But I don't work it out that way. The math is too hard to know what those order. I guess if you memorized all 16 answers... Yeah, that's a good idea, right, Luciano? Memorize all those ordered pairs? No. no, I wouldn't do it either. I can't do it. All right, real fast. Where's 180 at? That's a quadrental. 180 is here. When it's a quadrental, guys, just give me what that ordered pair is. If negative, one. negative one what? Zero. Perfect. So what's secant? What's the secant of that dot, that angle that goes to that dot? Remember what secant is. It's the flip of cosine. So if, answer me this. What's the cosine? Zero. I mean, one, negative, one. negative 1. So what's the flip of a negative 1? 1 over negative 1. What is it? Negative one. Still negative 1. You don't believe me? Use your calculator. Cotangent of a negative 30. I don't care if it's negative 30. That means it goes this way, 30. What must the reference angle be? What's the reference angle? What's this degree? No, I want to know the angle. What's this angle? 60 degrees. So I drop my triangle, realize that this is 60, then this must be the 1 because that's across the street from the 30. 1, 2, square root of 3. One of those is negative. Not. I just lied to you. None of those are negative. 
the chicken of that. So what's the, when I do cotangent, I told you I don't like cotangent. Let me think tangent first. Tangent's easier in my head. Then I can flip it. What's the tangent of this angle right here? I don't think either are negative. Okay. Over one, right? Or square root of three. So flip it now. There it is. And if you go and rationalize it, you get equals two square root of three over three. Now, negative 300 is not on there because you'd have to figure out that it's really going up to the 60. Find 60. What is the x value on the 60? One half. What is the y value? So if if tangent, if tangent is y over x, that would be square root of three over two over one half. See how more complicated that is? Then you'd have to flip the one half and make it two square roots of three over two, and that cancels out. Well, isn't that what we said tangent was? Or Alice said it was. She said it was square root of three over one. There it is, there's my tangent. It works. Those x and y's do work. It's just, I don't wanna do this. I didn't wanna do it right now, to be honest with you. 120, where's 120? Quadrant two. two. Watch the reference angle. 60. 60. Drop the perpendicular. Where's 30 at? I always say, where's 30? First quotient. Where? First quotient. No, I'm talking about in this triangle. It's, uh, it's, it's right here. Okay, loud, I want to hear. What is the length across from 30? What's the length of the side across from 30? How long is the hypotenuse? What's the other side? Which one of those are negative? All right, you're getting it. So cosecant, again, I don't want to think cosecant. Let me think sine. What's the sine of this angle right here? Over two. Are they negative or no? Now flip it. Two over the square root of three. But she's already, she's already rationalizing it. Finish it up, Alice. Uh, two square root of three over two. Yeah. I'm not going to check that ordered pair. You guys want to take the X and the Y at a uh, 120 degrees, and see if it comes out to this? That's your business. I don't really care. 15, 270. We've done this already. 270 goes all the way here. I just need to know the ordered pair. Zero, negative one. And tangent is y over x. So y over x is? Over zero, but what do we say? Undefined. Okay, let's drop down to, do, let's do a couple radians. Three pi over four. One pi over four, two pi over four, 3 pi over 4. There it is. You can do the math. 45 times 3. We've done this one already. What's the reference angle? 45, 45 again. Because we did it. Like, this one's cool. We keep doing the same ones over and over. They keep coming up, and you'll start memorizing them. What's across the street from the 45? 45. No, not angle. Side. 1. One. What's the hypotenuse? Square root of two. What's the other leg? One. One. She's got it. What's the cosine? Cosine is x over r. And use it in my triangle. I didn't use the unit circle because that would have to been a one. And I don't want to play that game. So what's x? Two. Except for you missed something. Huh? This one is negative, and I didn't tell you. You'd have to say it was negative 1 over the square root of 2, and you said negative 2 over 
two. She's got it. She's good. She's really good. Uh, let's do another, another one. Two pi over three. That's 60 degrees, right? Yes? Oh, yeah. Using 60. So it's 60 plus another 60. You're out here, right? Yeah. So what's the reference angle? Um, 60 plus another 60 must leave how much? 60. 60. Drop a triangle. What's across the street from a 60? What's the, the value of the side? Huh? Say it again? 30. No, no, not the angle, the side. You keep oh, giving me the angle. No, I tricked you. I asked you across the street from 60. Oh, but in reality, I always go with the 30 first. Three. A what? Three. No. Square root of three. Yes, yeah, square root of three. Oh. Yeah. And what's on the bottom? One. What's the hypotenuse? Two. Yes. Negative one. Oh, he got it. You got it. Luciano, I'm impressed today. That's got to be a negative one. So what's the tangent when it's y over x? Negative 2? The y is a square root of 3. The x is a negative 1. It's negative square root of 3. All right. Did almost all of them. And there's that same, there's that same chart. If you want to add all of those ordered pairs, all 16, go for it. <coughs> I'm going to have you do number one and number three. Number one, number three, and finish up that lecture problem. Yeah. Number one and three and finish up that lecture. That way you're doing one of each of what we did today. Yen, the papers are up front. I gave you the paper, but you are going to do the evens on this page. Take it serious. If you can get through this homework successfully, then your life with trig will be a piece of cake from now on. I guarantee it. You'll have a lot of understanding, a lot of mechanics down.